Welcome to week three of Dialectic in the Three Arts Workshop. This week we're learning the skill of putting propositions into logical form. A word on logical form first. Sometimes when we're trying to take ordinary prose and turn it into something which can be logically analyzed, when we're trying to take ordinary writing and put it in the kinds of forms we observed last week, simple propositions, the four different kinds of propositions we saw in categorical form, we need a little bit of help. We need to do a little bit of maneuvering, rephrasing, and that's the skill we want to learn this week. All clauses, if we're talking about simple propositions, must fit into one of the four following forms. All S is R P, that's the A form, remember. No S is R P, E, some S is R P, I, and some S is R not P, O. There are two questions to ask, thinking about form and matter. How can I make my proposition fit into its proper counterpart, one of these four over here on the left? And how can I make all of the matter fit in the brackets, the S and P brackets, so I have nice, tidy S and P terms? First, I find what the quantity and quality of the proposition is. Remember, determining whether the proposition is affirmative or negative um, and universal or particular. Here's a proposition. Chickens lay eggs. So if I want to put that into logical form, I first have to decide, is the proposition affirmative or negative? This one, we see, is affirmative. We don't see any negative terms in the sentence. It's just affirming a truth. Chickens lay eggs. It's affirmative. Is the proposition universal or particular? That is, is it talking about the whole class of chickens or just part of the class of chickens? It's universal. We're talking about all chickens. Chickens lay eggs. We have an affirmative universal, and we remember that the affirmative universal form of proposition is A, all S, R, P. So I need to take my sentence and turn it into an all S, R, P, or all S, is, P sentence. All chickens lay eggs. So all chickens, that works out pretty well, are lay eggs. Wait a minute. We have a problem here. What do we do with this? This is what I was talking about a moment ago, saying that sometimes when we put things in logical form, we have to do some tidying up. So how do we turn this predicate into a predicate term that works in logical form? Well, to fix this one, since I have a verb in the predicate, I might tag the words that which onto the beginning see what the results are. All chickens are that which lays eggs. This is good for two reasons. Now the sentence actually makes sense grammatically, and I have a term that I can do things with if I want to, say, add another proposition and create an argument. Let's look at another example sentence. Not many of my friends are angry. First we ask, is the proposition affirmative or negative? It is negative. We see that word not in there. Not many of my friends are angry. What about the quantity? Is the proposition universal or particular? Are we talking about the whole of the class of my friends or a part of the class? The sentence says not many, so that tells us we're dealing with the particular. Negative particular, that's our O form, some S are not, or some S is not P. So next I have to rewrite. This is my subject term, this is my predicate term. Some my friends, we already have a problem here. What's our problem and how do we fix it? If your term is an adjective, and here, um, my friends is functioning adjectivally in relation to the word many, not many of my friends. 
then I need to tag that which is onto the beginning. And this will be helpful for both the subject term and the predicate term. So that which is, I tag onto the beginning of an adjective that I'm trying to make a term. So I might say that some that which is my friends. And I know that sounds a little funny, but it, it works, um, especially if we need to move that term around in the sentence. Some that which is my friends are not angry. Now, that looks okay here, but we have a little bit of a problem with the word angry. What's the problem? If I try to take that term and I later create a proposition in which angry goes at the beginning of the sentence, you'll see that my result here, all angry are, doesn't make any sense. Um, this, too, is an adjective. It's actually a predicate adjective, and we need to do something with it. We just said that if you have an adjective to create it in an, a logical form term, you have to put that which is at the beginning. So we don't want to use this. We want to try some that which is my friends are not that which is angry. Some that which is my friends are not that which is angry. I will review that point at the end of the lesson, but first let's push on to some exercises. Put the following in logical form. No professional skateboarders escape injuries. First, is the proposition affirmative or negative? We have that word no there, so that tells us that it's negative. Is the proposition universal or particular? Am I talking about the whole class of professional skateboarders or only part of it? I'm talking about the whole. It's universal. Negative, universal. That's our E proposition. No S is P or no S R P. No professional skateboarders. That subject term works out pretty nicely. R Escape injuries? No. Wait a minute. What's our rule? No professional skateboarders are that which escapes injuries. Whenever we have in the predicate a verb, we need to tag on that which to the beginning. No professional skateboarders are that which escapes injuries. A good number of Calvinists believe in infant baptism. Affirmative or negative? Affirmative. Universal or particular? We're talking about a good number here, so that's particular. Affirmative particular. That is our I form. Sum S is P. That's the form we need to create. Now let's put the matter in the brackets. Some Calvinists are that which believes in infant baptism. We say that which at the beginning, remember, because our predicate is believe in infant baptism. So we tag on that which, and it works out quite nicely. The dishes are dirty. What do we do with this? Well, ask, affirmative or negative? Affirmative, pretty clearly. Universal or particular? We're talking about the whole class of the dishes or just part of the class? Universal, all of the dishes. So that's our A form, all S is P. But there's a little trick here we have to watch out for. All dishes. If I just put all dishes, what confusion could result from that? Uh, well, if I just say this, it seems to be indicating not just all of the dishes that I'm working on in the kitchen, but all dishes everywhere, all over the globe. So that's a problem. I need to correct this and make it all the dishes. Just be careful. If you have an article before a term, uh, be sure that that uh, range of particularity is communicated in the sentence when you translate it into logical form. So all the dishes are dirty. Notice that we have there at the end of that sentence what an adjective. An adjective. So we remember that when we have an adjective for a predicate term, we need to tag onto the beginning that which is. So we get not all the dishes are dirty. That's a problem. We have all the dishes are that which is dirty. That's our final correct way of doing this sentence. So to sum it all up, when translating prose propositions into logical form, we must ask two initial questions. One, is the proposition affirmative or negative? And the language 
in the sentence tells us that. If we see negative words like not or no or none, then we tell it's a negative. But if we have simple declarative proposition without negatives, it's an affirmative. And two, is the proposition universal or particular? That is, is it talking about the whole class of the subject term or just part of that class? The answers to these questions provide us with our form, A, E, I, or O, and then we have to go to the matter of fitting the matter into those brackets. Uh, to verb terms, we add that which, and to adjective terms, we add that which is. This is important. When you get this skill, you'll really be able to move on to some important tasks of taking real prose real ordinary writing, and then putting it in logical form, figuring out what the argument is so that you can analyze it and you can determine validity and soundness. It's a really helpful skill as we build toward our ultimate goal of creating argument maps.